My wife asked me if I could print a C battery version of this on the Prusa MK2S. She loves the quality I get out of it. Well, you should have seen what I had to go through to make this. Oh wait, you can see it right here on Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. Here's the guy that started it all. This is a great design. It's a AA battery holder. Doesn't require any supports to print. I did this on a Filament Friday many, many months ago. And I thought making this into a C for her shouldn't be a big deal. I'll squeeze it in on the Prusa as soon as I can. Here's the original file from Jay Galick. I looked for a C battery size. He didn't have one, but I searched a little more on Thingiverse and found this one from Kristoff DeWire. He did have a C size based on that original design. So I thought this is gonna be easy. Popped it into Simplify 3D, but then I found out this file is like Two-Face from Batman. One side's really good and one side is just ugly. I sliced it and I ended up with these little gap on one side and this big gap on the other. So clearly there was a problem with this file. So I tried the Repair Normals feature within Simplify 3D, sliced that, and it repaired the small little gap, but the big gap was still there. So there's something wrong with this file. But I heard of a trick where you can separate connected surfaces, and that was from Jim Carter, and I tried it. You separate it and slice it, but it didn't help in this case. It still had that big gap. So I went to makeprintable.com. This is where I fix a lot of files, loaded it in, and it said it fixed it, although it's really hard to see here. I let them know that this has got to be fixed. It's really hard to see green there. And then I said, well, I'm going to trust it. It's hard to see, but I'll download the STL file, load this in. It's always worked in the past. So let's see how it would turn out on this guy. Well, this continued. It fixed the problems and created a new one. It has this hole at the back. The sides are fine, but the back has a hole. And I thought, well, maybe slicing that will be ignored. Maybe it'll fix itself. I don't know. So I tried it and it, it was terrible. It, look, it's got a big hole in the back. I'm like, my God, can I not get a version of this to print? So I finally said, screw it. I'm going to Tinkercad and I'll make my own. So I brought in his original larger file, which I assumed fit a C-size battery. Then I brought in Jay Galick's original AA and I says, I'm just going to stretch this guy and make it bigger so they line up so I have one that's solid in Tinkercad that matches the size of the one that was designed to be for a C-size battery. I made that into a hole so I could see what I was doing. And then once I got it lined up, so everything, everything was just lining up, like he had stretched it, and I was doing the same thing. But once I got it all lined up, then I just deleted that original that had the flaws, and here it was. And just to make sure everything fit right, I measured a C-size battery and I took a cylinder and I sized it accordingly, 25 millimeters in diameter, 50 millimeters in length, and I positioned it inside this guy and made it into a hole so I could see. And then I duplicated that battery size and went through the whole thing just to make sure that everything was fitting, that it's going to roll down the ramps and that everything would work before I waste any more time printing this or doing anything else. I'd already wasted too much time on such a simple file. So then I just selected the file I want to release as the .stl file, loaded that into Simplify 3D, and when I sliced it, it looked great. So I had a good design. I don't know what was wrong with the original, but now it was fixed. So I decided to try out this Fiberology Navy Blue PLA filament that they sent me to review. It looks like a nice color filament, navy blue. She liked the color, so I said, fine. I'll use this to print the battery holder. But I couldn't help but be mesmerized by these spools. They're curved on the outside, flat on the inside. They look like tires. They look like wheels. These will be the perfect spools for a Generation 2 spool racer. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll put a link in the corner up here. But i got to get four of these for the spool racer. I was finally ready to print this battery holder. I'd spent way too much time up to this point. So I tried to load up the filament and found out that his spool holders, the Prusa spool holders, don't work with these rounded spools. Now I could have put a bar across there, but then I remembered I had a viewer tell me about this improved spool holder that he had designed. So I found it on Thingiverse under the username MicroEngineer and it's really designed well. I've been wanting to try this out, so I decided to 3D print a 3D print so I could 3D print the 3D print, right? So I grabbed this Polymaker PolyLite PLA that they sent me 
in order to evaluate. So I'll kill two birds with one stone. I'll test two different filaments. And this has got nice flat sides, so this should fit perfectly on the Prusa mounts. And they did. So I was making progress. So I loaded that into the printer. It's a nice black color, so that'll look good on the Prusa. And then here's a time lapse of it printing. I'm like, I think it was two and a half hours to print this. I was finally making progress, at least I thought. <laughs> I got layer shift on this thing. I never get layer shift on the Prusa. I could see that it was just one of those days. Things were going to go wrong. Something must have snagged on the side of it, some wire, maybe a cable during the uh, time lapse. I don't know. So I reprinted it, this time standing up. And here's the print. I wouldn't call this a beautiful print. I don't know why it's got kind of different coloring to it, but it's not bad. And if you look closely here, I sanded the bottom. I had to sand it in order to make this thing fit. And I didn't use supports on the end, so it was really, really rough at the end point. But I was to the point, I don't care. Let's just put this thing on. I want to get this battery holder printed. I'd spent way too much time. So I got it to snap on after sanding, and I like the way it looks. I really like this. I'll probably reprint it so it comes out better. I did do it at a 0.3 layer height, but it worked good. It's got a nice rounded top, so the blue filament spool fits and works nicely. So finally, I printed the battery holder, and it came out beautifully. Here it is, a close-up of it. I just love the way this thing looks. And the batteries roll down just like my analysis showed in Thingiverse or in Tinkercad. And so I loaded it up and she had her battery holder. I I'm telling you, for all the work I went through to make this thing, this is the most complicated print I've done in a while, even though it's simple. But it really works well. You pull the battery out and they all roll down. You just load new ones from the top and pull out from the bottom, so it works really well. And this is why she wanted it on the Prusa. The one on the left is the Wanho Duplicator i3 at a 0.3 layer height. It's a bit rough. It works. It's fine. It's functional. But it's so much better at a 0.3 on the Prusa. And because it's 0.3, I could print it faster. So definitely the Prusa is my preferred printer. Until you own a 3D printer, you really don't realize all those steps sometimes you got to take just to get a simple print done. And she's happy with it, and she should be, because it turned out really good, just like a lot of the prints I get off my original Prusa MK2S. It's absolutely the best printer I have in my shop. So if you like this type of video, maybe check out some of my other videos. If you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month to Patreon, the logo up here at my head. And if nothing else, click on that Chep logo and subscribe. I'll see you next week on Filament Friday.